Hello and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 4th of January 2019 and the time has just gone 11.35 GMT and I'm looking ahead to next week which is Monday the 7th of 7th of January until Friday the 11th of January and bearing in mind today's video has been recorded just after half past 11 GMT so we haven't actually uh, seen the uh, the release of the US non-farm payrolls figures so any of the, any of the, the commentary or any of the charts that I, I do look at obviously won't have the impact of the, 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 the US non-farm payrolls in them. Uh, so taking a very brief look at the week that has just gone uh, it's been a very volatile week uh, for global equity markets at the start of the week, um, we, we saw a lot of negative news in relation to China. Uh, the manufacturing figures uh, out of China were poor. And also, we had that uh, uh, revenue warning uh, from Apple, um, which was, was, once again was related to slowing sales in China. Uh, but in the, in the past 24 hours, uh, sentiment has turned around. Um, Beijing basically stated that they're very keen to actually stimulate the Chinese economy. And they've actually, since then, actually slashed the reserve requirement ratio. And have also there's talk of, a, of, of tax cuts to help stimulate the economy. Uh, so equity markets are are are, um, are in the high, are in um, are higher on, on the day today um, ahead of the U.S. job job numbers. Um, but keeping in mind, uh, in recent weeks and months, we have seen previous attempts by the Beijing authorities to actually stimulate the economy and actually turn sentiment around fail. So this could be just actually a possible. This, this could be a short-lived uh, a short-lived move to the upside. Uh, looking ahead to next week, and uh, the week kind of focus of the week is going to be on, on both uh, the UK retail sector and also the state of the US economy. So, taking a look at the UK retail sector, uh, we have a raft of, of we have quite a raft of uh, companies reporting, be it Christmas statements or uh, quarterly updates. So, next week we're going to hear from Morrison's, Sainsbury's, Moss Brothers, Mothercare, Tesco, Marks and Spencer, The Card Factory, and AO World. Uh, bearing in mind, 2018 was a very difficult year for the high street. Uh, retailers came under enormous pressure. There was a notable increase in profit warnings uh, from companies, um, for, from retailers. Uh, a combination of higher costs, the rise of online shopping, deep discounting to actually kind of stimulate customer activity, all these sort of issues, and not to mention uh, a bit of Brexit uncertainty as well, all played a factor uh, in actually in, in, uh, in weakening the retail sector. So. There's a lot of negative news already priced into the British retail sector. Um, so we could have a scenario next week uh, where maybe we could see what, what, like what we saw with next this week, whereby the numbers aren't great, uh, but if, if they happen to be kind of better than expected or, or their outlook isn't as bad as expected, uh, we could see actually a, a rally higher. That being said, expectations are very low. So if they actually manage to actually come in below those already low expectations, that will be quite negative for the sector as a whole itself. Um, also, next week, um, what we're going to hear, what, we're, what we have as well to keep an eye or keep an eye on, is the U.S. Federal Reserve minutes. Uh, this will be the minutes from the meeting last month uh, when the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates uh, for the fourth time in 2018, and that that hike, and on top of that, and, and the statement that accompanied that, that hike was actually one of the reasons why uh, equity markets in the last few weeks have been actually a bit uncertain. Uh, what we saw on, on the back of that hike was a, um, a statement where the Federal Reserve said they plan to hike twice in 2019, uh, but they also said they're concerned about inflation in the US and also um, growth in the US, not to mention the state of the global economy. Uh, so traders are going to have asked the question, why are the, why are the Federal Reserve looking to press ahead with tighter monetary policy, both in terms of kind of balance sheet rundown and higher interest rates if we're potentially facing a scenario of lower growth and lower inflation. And that's one of the reasons why we've seen a big sell-off and uncertainty in global, in global uh, equity markets, in particular the U.S. markets. The U.S. economy is in decent shape, but we have seen some, some uh, soft economic indicators of the U.S. recently. The housing data hasn't been great, and only yesterday the ISM manufacturing numbers was actually was actually quite disappointing. So there are some signs that the U.S. economy is cooling, and this ties in with the slower figures we're seeing uh, in terms of services and manufacturing in Europe, uh, not to mention the also cooling of the Chinese economy. So if the Federal Reserve uh, t continue the kind of you know hawkish line, despite the fact that the global outlook isn't overly aggressive, or isn't overly isn't overly rosy, that could be another way of actually adding pressure um, to to 
uh, global stock markets. Uh, also next week, keep in mind, we will also, on Wednesday, on Wednesday we'll also hear from the Bank of Canada. Uh, on Wednesday, we'll also hear from Bed Bath & Beyond, once again, tying in with the kind of wider retail sector. Um, and then on Friday, we're going to hear from US, the US will re release its latest inflation figures. Once again, it gives an indication of what demand is like in the US. Uh, so what I'll do now is take a look, a look at a couple of markets and see what kind of moves we could potentially see. So starting off with the FTSE 100, like I was saying, um, the retail sector is going to be very much in focus next week. And it's probably going to be a good gauge of actually what's going on in the British economy. So taking a look on a wider range, we we'll start off on a weekly chart. If you look at the two and a week moving average, uh, we can see that the FTSE 100 is firmly still below its two and a week moving average, although it is off the lows of December. Um, this red line here is the 200 week moving average, so we're well below that. Notice how it acted support uh, back in November 2016 and also in March 2018. But we, we saw kind of largely hover, hover above it in November of 2018. We're now firmly below it. While we, we remain below that metric, uh, it's likely we could see further moves to the downside. Um, if you do manage to take out the most recent low at 5,636, it could bring us back down to the 5,600 area, and, it, it, and, a, and a sizable move below that could take us back down towards 6,250. This this sort of region here, or between uh, up, up as high as 6,430 odd, down to about 6,250. This, this this region here. Uh, just take a look now on the daily chart to give you full indication. We can see it's a classic example of a downward trend, lower lows and, and lower highs. If we do move to the upside uh, on the FTSE 100, the first area to keep an eye out for could be this. We could see um, resistance come into play at the 50-day moving average, uh, this blue line here at 6,922. 6 Notice how they managed to act at resistance uh, in the past. And if it's acted resistance in the past, it makes it likely that we could see it act at resistance in the future. And a move beyond that could run to resistance at the psychologically important 7,000 level. I'll take a quick look, look now at the S&P 500, a good, uh, a good broad gauge of the U.S. stock market. Um, if you draw a line between the lows of, of February 2016 and the lows of November 2016, we get this trend line here. And we can see on a couple of occasions in October and November and even also December, it was respected on a number of occasions, but the market is firmly below that trend line. And while we remain below that trend line, it's likely we could see continued pressure on the S&P 500. And if you do look to kind of push on lower from here, we could be looking at retesting the December low at 2,319. A break below that could bring 3, 000, sorry, 2,300 into play. Uh, and then of course, if you go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards this region here in around the, in around the um, 2,250 region. Any move to the upside um, on the S&P 500 could run into resistance in around um, uh, 2,530, this area here. And then if you go beyond that, uh, resistance could come into play at 2,600. And a move beyond that, this trend line, which previously acted as support, may act as resistance. And that would potentially come into play in around the 2,645 region. Um, that's all for me this week. Uh, just one last thing before I go. If you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Um, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.